What's going on guys? It is December 27th, 2023, and it's 61 degrees outside. It's crazy. It's supposed to be winter. It's supposed to be cold as Christmas, as they say, but 61 is not very cold. I'm just in a long sleeve here, not even a thermal underneath this. So, man, oh man, I had a good holiday, man. I, I've been off since last Tuesday. You guys can tell by the lack of me posting videos. Had a nice long vacation break, and uh, it was good. Good to get some rest. Uh, good to do nothing, actually, but nice uh, Christmas stuff. Me and the wife went, did a lot of shopping last week leading up to Christmas. And then from about Christmas Eve on, we just kind of relaxed up until yesterday. So it was really nice. But my first call I did this morning was a woman who believes she had no heat. And um, I said, okay. And I knew this furnace well because I put a heat exchanger in it back in March. A uh, newer carrier, a uh, Bryant. I think it was like from 2019, 2018. Um, heat exchanger was fully under warranty. But see, this particular um, customer did not live in this space back in March. She didn't move in until the summer. And um, so I, I was concerned. I said, well, wow, I just put the heat exchanger in that in March. I wonder what happened. So I go there um, and it's on a 14 lockout, which is a hard lockout for ignition failure. And uh, I get looking and I go to start it up. Heat, uh, glow plug comes on, gas valve clicks, nothing happens. <laughs> so guess what? She has no gas. And I go to the meter, her meter's locked. So, and I'm sure it was just a, um, uh, a technicality changing from one customer to the other. And I don't know how they let her go this long. Maybe the gas company just um, figured it out and went and locked it because I'm sure she would have needed heat before now. We've had some pretty cold days, but, uh, but either way, she, uh, um, she didn't have any heat because she had no gas and it's crazy how much that happens I mean you guys any guys that work in a residential service you guys know this kind of stuff happens all the time you know uh, didn't pay the gas bill or um, never got the gas switched over to their name accidentally turned the the, the wall switch off <laughs> I mean all kinds of stuff even as um, as high as maybe a, a, a breaker tripped and they they didn't think to um, They didn't think to go check it because these are the things I kind of ask when I first show up uh, I say did you check the breakers most of the time? It's no <laughs> uh, You did you make sure you got enough gas for customers who are on uh, LP that can check their own tanks um, Some of them say yes. Some of them say I'm not sure but or they'll say, yeah, I'm auto, I'm on auto fill up. So that shouldn't be a problem, which sometimes it is a problem because sometimes you'll use all your gas before they come back out. But um, what's common sense to us, even some of the most educated customers, is not common sense to them. So we do have to treat them with, with, that, um, with, with that level of respect, you know, not because we look at this stuff every day. You know, that's the first thing I think when the thing's not running. First thing, does it have power? Yup, it's got power. Does it have gas? Those two things, yup, it's got power, got gas, move on to the next step. So, but a lot of people, you know, don't, don't think that way. They just know they don't have any heat. So, but either way, that cost this, this lady who, she wasn't an elderly lady, but she wasn't a young lady either. So, uh, that's, a, that's a good lesson for her because she had to pay me. And now she has to go pay her deposit to get her gas turned on. So I guess the moral of the story is when you go up on a customer that has, that accidentally has turned their wall switch off or has ran out of gas or um, has their, their tank locked out from uh, just moving in or something like that, just be cur courteous of that. People don't think about that stuff the way you think they should. All right, guys, first up today, though, is a follow-up. I go back and put the parts on that glycol beer chiller, and uh, it's always a good idea to disengage your capacitors, especially the star capacitors, as you can see in the thumbnail, but uh, take a look. All right, we are back here. 
here on this beer chiller today. We have the parts right here. They look OEM also, so that's good. So we're gonna take the old parts off of the compressor, put the new ones on. It actually has been working since I was here. So cleaning up the connections and putting it back on worked, but we've still got new capacitor, new relay and overload for it. So let's get the thousand screws out. Let's get going. All right, here is our capacitor and relay. So we want to do this carefully. We want to make sure all the wires go back in the right spots. this one off with everything connected to it and pop the new one on and then just go wire for wire putting it back on I've got it unplugged down down there but it's always good to just be, be safe so we're also going to short out this capacitor it is a star capacitor see <laughs> That's why you want to short them out. Alright, now we can get this thing off here. screwdriver and push it in the rest of the way good still think that might be able to go back a little bit further just want to be very careful this stuff is plastic and it's not meant to have a whole lot of trauma all right now we can go wire for wire all right Pretty simple stuff as far as wiring goes. Just go ahead and plug this back in. And uh, we'll get our cover to put on there. Once I find it, here it is. Alright, got her packed back in there nice and neat. Go down, back down, plug it in, make sure everything comes back on right. All right, off and running. I had to jump the gun putting this cover back on because I wanted to get an amp draw. Well, we better take it back off. We are pulling a little less amps than we were when I first originally diagnosed this, but we're also under less load. Uh, if you look here at the battery, it's 7 amps and we're right, we're right almost there. Um, the unit is under warranty and the restaurant owner has been in contact with who he bought this equipment from and he's said he was going to get them to send him a compressor so uh, if this compressor does end up going we'll have one on standby because it does seem like that amp draw is a little high uh, for what the data plate rating is 
so it's like, it's like right there. So he's got a new compressor coming. If this one fails, we'll have one. Yeah, guys, so always disengage your capacitors. Now, most of the time that's not gonna do that on a run capacitor, but it could. But it, it happens, I'd say, six times out of 10 with a star capacitor. So make sure you always disengage your capacitors. But uh, check, check this one out here, a quick one I did. I was PM in an oil furnace and it kept, kept wobbling. And I was like, what is this wobble about? Check out this blower wheel. You notice there, it's bent. And it's causing a wobble in the unit. We're gonna have to replace this blower wheel. It's not a, it's causing the unit to shake. It's not a lot of shaking, but it is a little bit. I'll show you. you hear that? We're gonna have to replace that bow wheel. Yeah, so we'll get that customer a new blower wheel and get him fixed right up and he'll be good to go. So let's check this thing out here. Something that I don't see very much of here on the Eastern Shore of Maryland, but it might be more, uh, more prominent in your area. Well, here's something we don't see very often. We have a, a Ream two-stage gas furnace here. Uh, but this system is dual fuel, hybrid, whatever you want to call with it. With a Geo outdoor condensing unit. You know, I see a lot of Geo and I see a lot of dual fuel. I just usually never see a dual fuel Geo. <laughs> it's crazy. But here we are. It's crazy is he has a regular heat pump for upstairs. It's got some age on it too, but this, uh, this is actually a first for me. I have never seen a dual fuel geo with gas furnace. I mean, I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure they exist. It's just the first time I've seen one. Let's dig into it. This is just a PM, so see how it runs yeah i got myself in quite a pickle so um i went to pull the flame sensor to clean it and it broke right off so it was probably getting ready to fail anyway um i don't know have you guys ever tried to jb weld these things or anything uh, i mean it, i'm not gonna try all that i'm just i was just curious if anybody tried before um this one um I, the uh ream dealer has one at their uh branch about an hour and a half from me so they're going to transfer it to our local branch and it'll be in in the morning but um that's just a bummer um good thing this is a dual fuel system so i can um just lock out the gas furnace for the night and they'll just uh use the heat pump i do carry a couple flame sensors on my truck i was going to see if i could make one of these work in the meantime but it's just not the right dimensions um it, i'd never get one of those to work unless i drilled a new hole or something like that so that's how this one's supposed to be this one right here is too short and this one right here is not bent at all so um yeah it happens to the best of us guys so we'll get them a new one get it put in but chances are this thing was getting ready to break anyway all I did was grab it and pull on it, and it broke right off. <laughs> it happens, guys. It happens. All right, so all I did was um, I, well, I put it back just in case I'm not the one that comes back, so there's no confusion on where it goes. And this unit is a two-stage furnace, so it has two stages of backup heat, but it also has two stages of heat pump. So it's four stages all together. Um, so basically what I did was I kept the two compressor stages in place and we took away the two backup heat stages um, 
until we get the new flame sensor. So the furnace will not activate at all. Um, because it really doesn't need to because the geo does not go into defrost. So it's not like we're gonna have a, a whoosh of cold air coming at any time um, because it does not defrost. It just used this um, in the case of an emergency. So we'll be good to go. And most of its options weren't even really set up. It was only set up to go into emergency heat if there was more than a four degree difference, four degree heat droop from the set point and the actual temperature. It, was, it didn't even lock out uh, the geo at a certain temperature point. So um, this system isn't being utilized to its full potential, but um, either way, I don't even think the furnace would have even ran between now and tomorrow morning, but just to be on the safe side, we got her um, disabled. Hey you guys, check out these neat little, some of this stuff is novelty, but it works cool. But I got all this as Christmas presents from various different people. Kenny got me this. Um, it's a rechargeable headlamp. Works pretty good, very bright. It's got a couple different settings here. It's got this very bright light. That's the one I'll use most of the time. It's got really bright, uh, dimmer, and then off. Then over here we have a little bit of a dimmer light and then red and then I thought one of them flashed. Eh, something flashes at some point, but that's cool. I've used that three times today already. Uh, got this little magnetic flashlight with a pen clip. Very bright. Works pretty good when it has brand new batteries in it. This is neat here. Uh, LED flashlight gloves. So it goes on. Um, thumb and index finger there's two of them you turn it on um, so you can light up what you're putting your hands on um, I haven't used them yet but I did try them on see how they work works pretty good so looking forward to using that then we have this guy here which I had one of these at one point they, they had them at like a display at one of the um, uh, supply houses so but what I didn't like about it was it um, the magnet on this side was not strong enough to hold the whole light up when it was completely uh, uh, telescoped out. So look at this. <clears throat> it goes all the way out like that. And it's got a little flashlight on the end, magnetized on this end and the other one. So you got a light going on there. And then if you wanted to set it up like this, look at what you're working on, bam. So my last one, the magnet wasn't strong enough and it would fall off like this every time I would have it fully extended. This one does not do that. So very nice. And then what else we got here? Oh, and this little pocket knife. So nice little haul, nice little haul for Christmas. Drop down in the comments what you guys got. Yeah hey guys, I know today's video was kind of all over the place, but I was out for a week, figured I'd film a few things today let you guys know how my day went and so forth so all right guys that's gonna be it for this one though so don't forget to like the video and subscribe and hopefully tomorrow we get some good service content for you guys i really don't even know what i'm getting into yet but uh, we'll see so all right guys i'll catch you on the next one